I'm going to try and explain now a main principle behind motors and alternators. You've already seen that uh, if we had you know, north and south poles of a magnet and wires moving, you get movement and all the rest of it. Um, I'm going to explain now, using some pretty basic methods, um, how, uh, how that relates then to motors and, and alternators, both of which are turny things rather than just moving up a little bit. So um, imagine, if you will, that, that this uh, part bin here is, is our north magnet, and this part bin here in blue is our south magnet. And this bit of old coat hanger is a wire. Then what we've seen is that if we had the wire sat inside the, the magnetic field here, and if we put a current down here, then as the current flowed, then the magnetic flux around the wire would oppose the magnetic flux of the field here and would create movement, would move it up. And if we put it, the current, that is, in the other direction, it would move the wire down. OK? So, current in one direction, it moves up. Current in the other direction, it moves down. OK? Now, that's also true if I move it through there as well. If I, if I move it in one direction, I get current in one direction. If I move it in the other direction, I get current in the other direction on the wire, which is how alternators work. But we need some movement, so I'm going to take this, this bit here uh, of coat hanger, because that's the kind of high budget thing here, and frankly I'm just no good at 3D animation, so you're going to have to just bear with me a little bit while I play wire bending games. So here I've got this loop that I've just made. If the loop is sat inside the field like this and I connect it to an external supply so that I've got say plus volts here, minus here, so that it's going to create a circuit going around the loop watch my magnet, uh, and back out again then we've seen that current's going that way down that wire and it's coming this way on this wire so that means that this is going to want to go up and that's going to want to go down this up, that down, which is going to create torque or a turning motion like this. So it starts here, put current around the loop, it will turn that. So if this was just one of several different windings, then we'd end up <coughs> being able to create continual motion by putting a current down it. That just leaves the question of how we manage to put current always on this side in and always out on that side. Uh, and that's done with a thing called a commutator and brushes, and I'll show you one of those in a second um, on a real one. But that's the principle. Current in here, current out here. It's going in that direction on that side of the loop, but it's coming back in this direction on that side of the loop, and that's going to create torque. I have a 50cc scooter starter motor here which is nice and simple and show you on it how the circuit is maintained in one direction through the loop using a, a commutator. So this the circuit is completed through the ground of the, the actual aluminium yoke or, or body here and the supply in is, is coming down here through this insulated wire. I've unscrewed the main parts of the uh, the body here I'm going to pull it apart. Often when you pull these things apart you'll hear a, a spring sound which is part of the commutator assembly that we'll be looking at, pulling apart. Um, bang, there it goes, which makes them a nightmare to put back together. So here you can see a pair of brushes. I mean they're not really brushes anymore these days, they're a piece of uh, uh, material that is designed to slowly um, wear away, it's not designed to wear away, but it does slowly wear away as it brushes against uh, the edge of the commutator in there, which we'll look at in a second. But you can see they're spring loaded, these are the contacts, this is what, as the loops are moving past, there are lots and lots of loops in here, as each one moves past it connects in with these so that it's constantly getting its positive down this side and its earth off through the body via this brush here. So as the commutator turns, it's constantly got one direction of current going through it, which keeps the motor 
moving. Inside there, you can see there's a pair of magnets. There's a north and south. Often in a starter, I mean this is tiny, but in a in a starter motor normally you'd expect to see four magnets uh, running. You know, one, two, three, four, creating north, south, north, south, north, south, north, south. These these fields which uh, the current is going to pass through. This is the the little commutator. This end, and this is called the the armature. So in here you can see the ends of the loops. There's one end wired in here, look, and then that loop goes around here and then back out on the other side. The loops, as you can see them in here, they don't cross all the way over the middle, they're running edges so that the loop is forever being pushed out the side rather than being pushed in the middle. Um, once it's connected, the current goes through the loop. The loop, as we saw earlier on, is turned, which then disconnects one loop and reconnects the next loop in, constantly at the best angle to gain the maximum amount of torque out of the motor. And there it goes.